Uncle Roscoe says make sure you eat your bran flakes in the morning because those bran flakes are a great source of fiber and that's good for your tummy. Okay, there's things that we know have fiber and they're not all that exciting, but then there's foods that are sneaky sources of fiber. Foods that are sometimes fun and a way for us to get more fiber in our diet without ever even realizing it. Jumping right in, the first one is dark chocolate. We're talking over 11 grams of fiber for a 100 gram serving. Now, you of course have to watch the sugar content, but there was an interesting paper that took a look at dark chocolate and how it affected blood sugar and insulin resistance independent of the whole fiber thing. So this study took a look at 15 days of 100 grams per day of dark chocolate consumption versus 90 grams per day of white chocolate. Then they went seven days of a washout period where they didn't eat anything uh, or eat the chocolate and then they crossed over. The white chocolate group went to the dark chocolate, etc. vice versa. Okay, what they found is that both times those that were consuming the dark chocolate ended up having beneficial metabolic effects. They had improvements in insulin resistance, improvements in insulin sensitivity, improvements in glucose modulation, overall metabolic parameters improved. Well, what was really the difference between the dark chocolate and the white chocolate? Both actually had fiber. The dark chocolate had about 500 milligrams of polyphenols. So what you're gonna see today is the things that I'm talking about have fiber, but they also have different benefits that make them tremendous for blood sugar control and for overall digestion. So in this case, dark chocolate, a tremendous source of fiber, and the polyphenols actually cancel out some of the sugar that's in it in the first place. So I would recommend finding like an 80 to 93% dark chocolate or something like that. Or if you're really brave, go for the 100% baking chocolate, serious bitter stuff. This next one is gonna make some enemies, but I want you to hear me out because I'm not saying everyone should go do this. Popcorn. Okay, I'm not a big fan of grains. I don't really eat popcorn. Thing is, is that 100 grams of popcorn has 14 grams of fiber. That's a really wicked way to get some fiber in without realizing it. But we have a problem. When you take a corn kernel and you pop it and you heat it and inject air into it, you explode these starch molecules into individual glucose molecules. So what you have there is a very high glycemic starch. Fortunately, the fiber content brings the glycemic index down a little bit, but not tremendously. Still a good source of fiber, but you still have a pretty high glycemic snack. But if you are comparing that to potato chips, it's quite interesting. There's a study published in Nutrition Journal that did just this. They took a control group, then they took one cup of popcorn group, six cups of popcorn group, and one cup of potato chips group. They found the group that had the six cups of popcorn had the best satiety and the best overall metabolic response. What this is demonstrating is that because of the fiber content in the popcorn, it was much higher on a satiety score and ultimately a lower calorie snack than even the one cup of potato chips. So if you're looking calorie for calorie, if you're going to indulge in something that's like a starchy snack, popcorn is a heck of a lot better than potato chips. Just be careful because the microwavable ones have a bunch of oil added in them so the calories stack up. You always want to just air pop the organic popcorn whenever you can. And realistically, it's probably not the best snack to have if you're going to be sedentary just because that glycemic spike without any movement is not a good combination. Next up is one that is really, really sneaky and flies under the radar. That's macadamia nuts. And the reason it's sneaky is because if you look at macadamia nuts, the fiber content is decent, but it's not extraordinarily high. But as a ratio to the amount of carbohydrates that are in it, it's a lot of fiber. Like if you look at an ounce or two of macadamia nuts, you're looking at like seven or eight grams of total carbs, but the majority of it ends up being fiber. Like two ounces is gonna be like five to six grams of fiber. So the bulk of that roughage is actually fiber. And it seems to be a good soluble fiber too, which is somewhat rare in nuts. You find it in hazelnuts, you find small amounts of soluble fiber, but it's nice to see the soluble fiber that draws water in and actually swells up in our colon and can feed the gut bacteria. That's really cool with macadamia nuts. Additionally, macadamia nuts are really high in omega-7s, one of the only food sources that you can find that has omega-7s in it, outside of like sea buckthorn berry and some of these more obscure things. Omega-7s are seeming to be quite tremendous when it comes down to insulin sensitivity, at least when it comes down to the animal models. We're starting to see a lot of emerging data on that. So it could be a total powerhouse when it comes down to insulin sensitivity, metabolic health, and glycemic control. Not just because of the fiber, but because of the other attributes. I popped the link down below if you like macadamia nuts. That's a 20% off discount link to get whatever you want from House of Macadamia. They have some macadamia nut bars that are rivaling Kind Bar. I mean, these things are 
They're designed to be like a kind bar, but they're sweetened with allulose and they do not have sugar in them. The first ingredient is literally macadamia nuts. Normally when you look at bars, you find all kinds of garbage, but if you're not into the bars, that's cool. You can get straight up macadamia nuts. They've got Himalayan salt flavor, they've got onion flavor, they've got salsa flavor, straight up nothing, it's super simple too. But then also, if you get anything through House of Macadamia, you are going to get a 20 ounce bottle of cold pressed macadamia nut oil totally free. So when you use that 20% off discount link and code, not only do you get 20% off, you get a free bottle of macadamia nut oil. So that's a big thank you to people that watch my videos and that's exclusive for people on my channel. So that link is down below, top line of the description underneath the video. This next one is sneaky too, it's raspberries. We think raspberries are, are fruit. That's, that's great, maybe there's a little bit of fiber, but we're talking eight grams of fiber in a typical serving. That is huge. Now what's interesting about raspberries, if you look at the research, they have multiple angles in which they're good for the metabolism, not just the fiber. There's a study that was published in Nutrition and Diabetes. It was a rodent model study, but it's interesting because of what they, what they determined here. They put these rats on a very high calorie, high fat diet to basically make them metabolically unhealthy. And then they gave some of them a high amount of raspberries, or actually a modest amount of raspberries. They found that the raspberry groups ended up having improvements in insulin sensitivity and better glucose levels. Now, the reason behind this could be multiple fold. A, it's the fiber, B, it's the polyphenols, C, it's the antioxidants, and D, it's the tannins, which actually inhibit the enzymes that break down carbs. So when you have raspberries alongside other carbohydrates, you can actually slow down the breakdown of the carbohydrates so you don't have as much of a blood sugar spike, therefore improving insulin sensitivity. So not only are you getting the fiber angle, but you're also getting this multi-pronged approach to modulate your metabolism a bit. Another one that I'll throw in there that people forget about a lot is coconut. Again, like a 100 gram serving is gonna be nine or 10 grams of fiber. And in this case, it's usually an insoluble fiber. So super good in the way of roughage, just pushing stuff through the colon, just kind of like transit time and helping things out there. Not a whole lot to say other than the fact that the fatty acid profile is quite good too. You've got monolaurin, you've got lauric acid. Okay, this is a C12 type uh, MCT, medium chain triglyceride, which is very, very good for the gut health. Also antimicrobial and antibacterial. So not a bad idea to add some coconut into the mix. In fact, what I like to do is mix coconut shreds and macadamia nuts. It's a really good tasting snack. The next one is one that we know has a lot of fiber, but people don't realize how powerful it is. That is chia. For every 100 grams of chia seeds, there's 35 grams of fiber. And if you've ever put chia seeds in water or milk, they swell up. So even though the actual grams of fiber doesn't really change, the actual volume of bulk changes tremendously because of that gelatinous effect. This has a tremendous effect on our glucose, but obviously has a tremendous effect on our satiety. There's a study published in Nutrition Research and Practice that had subjects eat yogurt, with nothing in it, yogurt with seven grams of chia or yogurt with 14 grams of chia. In a dose dependent fashion, the more chia that was added to yogurt, the more satiated the people were. Showing that chia seeds, because of that fiber and that swelling content, that swelling effect, ends up having a huge effect on our satiety throughout the course of the day. So it's a great way to start the day by adding chia with your breakfast meal. This next one is kind of weird and it might be interesting to bake with. It's called buckwheat. It's getting more popular. Now buckwheat is unique because A, it has like 10, 11 grams of fiber in a 100 gram serving. So if you bake some bread with buckwheat, you've got a good amount of fiber naturally occurring, but it's naturally gluten-free. It's what is called a pseudo grain. So it's sort of like a grain, but it's technically not. It's kind of like quinoa where it falls into the grain family, but it's not officially a grain. But in addition to the 10 grams of fiber, you've got over 13 grams of protein. So when you look at it in terms of glycemic index, it's a very minimal impact. But there's one other interesting thing. Buckwheat is also partially resistant starch, which means we lack the enzymes to fully break down buckwheat. So when we eat it, it sits in our gut a little bit and allows our gut bacteria to feed on it. This is great for our glucose levels because it doesn't spike, but it also feeds our microbiome, which can have an impact on fatty acid utilization, can have an impact on uh, glucose metabolism, can have an impact on glucagon-like peptide one which means it has a similar effect to taking something like semaglutide or ozempic, where it makes you feel very satiated and has a big impact on your glucose levels. Next one is in a similar category, and that's gonna be cooled oats. Oats are interesting because if you heat oats, you take that starch chain, just like the popcorn, and you make it high glycemic. So you don't wanna just heat oats and say, oh, I'm getting a few grams of fiber, uh, and throw that all to the wind simply because you have a big spike. It doesn't, it doesn't work that way. Like, that's not a good trade-off. But if you let oats cool, 
they become very low glycemic. So they become a retrograded starch where you heat up the oats and then they cool back down into a different form of starch chain that's harder for the body to break down. But you also have beta-glucans, which are a very unique kind of starch that we lack the enzymes to break down. So very beneficial for the gut microbiome. So with cooled oats, you're talking like a quarter cup being needed. A quarter cup cooked, not even uncooked. Heat the stuff up, take a quarter cup of it, let it cool, eat it cold or add it to a smoothie cold. It's not the same if you just add straight oats into a smoothie. You have to cook them, cool them, then add them to a smoothie and you get that beta-glucan effect, really powerful. And the last one on the list is another sneaky fruit and that's gonna be pears. But pears are not going to give you what you want unless you eat the skin. The skin is a tremendous source of fiber, but you have a lot of fiber in the actual meat too. The skin gives you the benefits of lutein and zeaxanthin, which are carotenoids that are very powerful for eyesight. So as we start getting older, they're antioxidants that protect our eyes a little bit more. So you get this extra bang for the buck, not just fiber. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.